Hey, what up, socialites? Welcome back to the Social Studies Podcast with me, Joe Dombrowski. And me, Gaspar Inazzo. I'm going to be in Irvine, San Jose, Sacramento, Charleston, Charlotte, Boston, New York, Winnipeg, Atlantic City, Newark, Portland, Toronto, Chicago, Atlanta. Also, my straight friends every month in Seattle, every month in L.A. And we're also adding some cities on. We are likely, actually, it's confirmed, we're going to do my straight friends in Nashville in December. Ooh. So you can get your tickets That's to exciting. anything to see me at thejoedombrowski.com. And you could get tickets to see me in Tampa, Cleveland, Detroit, Manchester, Tennessee, Atlanta, Staten Island, Freehold, New Jersey, Austin, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, Allentown, Grantville, Pennsylvania, Poughkeepsie, New York, just added. Raleigh, North Carolina, just added. Rochester, Manasquan, and then really, really just added Chandler, Arizona, and San Diego, California. Get your tickets at gasparadazzo.com. Gas. Joseph, let me tell you, I have been the laziest pile of shit since getting married. You know what's so funny? I just said that to Melissa about you. What? That I've been such a lazy pile of shit. No, recently? I was like, I was like, this is like Joe, the most like inactive in the entertainment world I've ever seen. Joe, I was like, but this is what happens because like you're not on the road. Like when you're on the road, you're more like on the go, more busy, more like active with it you know what i mean but like Dude, i was my like managers the other day they were like hey yeah you had a great wedding boba we were all there so time to start posting stuff and i was yeah, like i, was I like, don't want to yeah i was like he's just like relaxing i was like i get it oh my god it's a full total disconnect and it has felt so good although i do kind of feel like you know Okay, Joe, this is also your job. Like, you can't just not be doing anything. You know, like, I am I feel personally like myself, I'm way more productive during the school year than I am in the summer. Uh -huh. And it's like, uh -huh. when you have all the time off in the world, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, eh. Like, I have no desire to, like, Dude. film content, record stuff. Like, yep. like, we get ads for the podcast. It's like, eh, I'll record them later. Whereas if I was teaching, I'd be like, all right, tonight, 8.30 at night, 9 o'clock at night, 9.15. I'd have a whole schedule mapped Boom, 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 done. And totally. I would just do it. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, it's something about, like, having the time. Like, my kids are at camp, and I'm like, yeah. just fucking relaxed. It sucks. I, okay. If I have two weeks to handle something right now, I'll get it done, and it'll be, be it'll be past perfect. But I'll do it in the last four hours. Mm -hmm. but, 100%. If you told me I need this done and it's due in a day, I'll be like, okay, let's fucking ride. Let's do it right now. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I'm just, I've always been like that and shit's good. But like, and when I'm on the road too, I could be tired of shit, but I'm like pumping out, pumping out, pumping out stuff. Here we go. Let's do it. And now I'm just kind of like, meh. It's a bad, I'm never like this. You know that. No, oh, I, I know. That's why I wasn't saying it in a bad way. I was just saying to Melissa, I was like, Joe's like in the most relaxed state I've ever seen him. I was I like, know, it's crazy. I gotta get back on it. But you know what else happens? Like on the road too, like I find like when I have all the time in the world, when I'm in a hotel from eight in the morning till six o'clock at night for showtime and I'm like, I'm going to bring my laptop. I'm going to write. I'm going to do this. I'm going to edit videos. I do none of it. But then when I'm like home and the kids are on top of me jumping on me, I'm like, oh, I should do this. I should do that. I, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know. Let Not me tell you this thing. too. I have noticed since my focus has become my stand up comedy, my stand up comedy has gone from good to fantastic, right? I'm not like, I've turned down a couple like influencer type gigs recently because I'm like, listen, I don't want to be known as that. I don't want to be that fucking dude. I don't want to be some, you, you scroll through the internet and I'm, uh, I'm just going to say how it is. No shade or whatever. It tends to be a bunch of schmucks who got some. I Here's an example. This fucking guy. This guy has got like fucking 900,000 YouTube followers. You always know something's fucked up when their Instagram says how many followers they have on another platform. You feel me? 450,000 on TikTok. It's like, shut up. This ain't TikTok. But this guy's got these videos. And he was like advertising his music video or whatever that he made. 
But then the all the videos were like, it's time for water of the day. And he was right. literally had a glass of water and was like mixing flavors and then putting different shaped ice in it. And that was his water of the day. And these were the videos that got him popular. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, yo. And no shade. You go to his page to watch water of the day. I want pe you're coming to my page to watch stand up. You're coming to t listen to me tell jokes and then you're coming to find out if I'm coming to your city. Right. And I do not want that confused confusion. So I'm not trying to make videos of a trend or like matching a sound to an emotion. I I'm not I'm not trying to do that. And I do feel like that producing that kind of content is taking me away from what I want to be focusing on and known that. And I'm not going to do it. Just because oh, someone says I need to, I'm not. Well, and like, that's the other thing. Like, I sometimes I think to myself too, like, if I just put all my energy into something, like, it would be so much better. Like, because sometimes I'm like, wow, like, I had shows this whole week and I was like, wow, these were really good shows. And then I'm like, wow, imagine I did this like full time and like, really like sat with it and like recorded my set and cut, like, you know, and I'm like, wow, it would be so much better. But then I'm like, Oh, all the other things in life. Like, you know what I mean? But, I, mm -hmm. I, and then like, I do all that shit, like the, tr like the trends and all that stuff. Well, not really the trend. I don't really do the matching up the voices a lot, but like, I, I'm just like, I should just put all my effort into stand up or, but I don't want to be an influencer. Like, that's not like my thing. I don't really like that. You know, it's funny. Like my like team of management people were like, oh, next time you take a video, like put a water bottle in it and like face the water bottle to the screen and then we could like reach out to the company and be like, hey, look, like he's already drinking Poland Spring, so you should like pay him for this. So I was like, oh, that's so fucking awkward. Like, I don't know. But anyway, so I was in the green room with this guy, Frank, who opened for me, great, really funny comic. So I told him that he was laughing. So we found all different water bottles from all different companies, <laughs> aimed them all at the camera. And I took a video, I go, I sent it to my management team and I said, hey, let them know that like Poland Spring is interested but then I was like, also tell Snapple Water that Poland Springs interest. I said, cross-reference everybody and say everybody else is interested. I go, let's start a bidding war. She's like, this is this isn't good advertising. Like you have literally every water bottle. I was drinking from all of them. I was like, you know, I was just fucking around because that's my way of being an influencer is doing it wrong. I will say too, this is the first time in six years that I've ever actually like relaxed for real. Like for real. Oh, I believe it. I know. My mom was like, it's okay. You need your body to recharge. I was like, uh, uh, we're not, we are not, what's it called when you, um, oh, enabling. I go, we're not enabling this behavior. I don't need, I need someone to kick me in the head. I want Morgan to wake up and be like, get your lazy ass up and go to the fucking gym, you heifer. Yeah, but I don't think that it's a bad, I no, I don't think it's a bad thing, but I know I'm at the, Gasper, I'm in the last days of this. Like, but like people no go on their honeymoon for two weeks sometimes. You know what I mean? Right, right. But like so, I'm at the tail end. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, speaking of life insurance. No, 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 no. Well, <laughs> I, before that, I do want to tell you. So I had shows in Long Island this weekend, right? I can't wait yeah. for you to one day play Long Island. You're going to love it there. Yeah, I've been feeling like I need to. You I should. feel like Long Island people don't go to the city. They don't. I wouldn't. But why? It's far. But what's far you know what's far me taking a six hour flight there that's far so fuck yeah, but, you dude they will pile in like so i've done this club six times already and five of them sold out and one got like pretty damn close to it they are like a comedy town like they will come they will party they're awesome whatever right so i want to tell you first i brought my mom my mom wanted to come to the show and you know how fun yeah. that is when a mother comes to a show. I love my mom very much. Um, but like, you know how it is when you bring someone to a show, whether it's Morgan, your mom, anybody, you know, you have like that added like responsibility pressure, right? Do you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, actually, um, a little peep behind the curt. Morgan, whenever he comes to a show, and it's also the same with my mom and dad, cannot, and they know this, you're not allowed to sit within eyesight. So if the house sits them up front are close get your ass back you get up and you tell them absolutely fucking not 
Well, I hate when people I know sit close. The back wall. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, no, no. I don't no, no, want no. anyone I know to be close. It ruins it for me. I can't ask them what they do when I know I think, everybody what they do. I think it ruins it for me, but also it ruins it for them. Like, why would you sit up front if I know you? Like, I'm what am I gonna say? Inside jokes about you that nobody else understands. Yeah, and that's... also, like these people who never get to see me, they should be sitting up front. Yeah. But also I don't need to be like uh, Morgan doesn't laugh at my shit typically. But my last crowd work show, I did get I did get him doing some hee hee, some ha ha, some tee hees, some toohoos. And that felt real good. Let me tell you this. But that's why he can't sit up front because I cannot watch him blank face staring at me during my set and then me get all in my head about it. Yeah. No, Melissa wouldn't laugh either. 100%. She would just stare. <sighs> um. So anyway, so I bring my mom. My mom, you know, she's my mom and I love her. And like, you know, she's like so proud. Like people are piling in and she's like, that's my son. My son's Gasper. She's pointed to the picture of me. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, Take a picture in front of the picture of you. It was in the main lobby. There was a line to get in. I go, mom, I'm not taking a picture in front of all these people. Like, it was just like, more, you know, it was just embarrassing over and over. And then like, my cousins came. My mom brings them all in the green room. She's like, what can I get for you guys? What do you want me to order? I go, no, no, no. You guys will have to go out. I will take care of your bill. I will do everything, but you got to be outside. You, you can't. I was like, oh, Ron Dombrowski did that shit, too. I played a huge theater in Michigan. I'm backstage. And then he comes parading in with all like his like second and third cousins and shit. Oh, Joe, you remember? And I pulled him aside. I was like, yo, yo, if the sentence starts with, do you remember? <laughs> They're not coming back, dad. OK. And and also, I don't know. Can you get me the security guard? Because these people were never on the list. You were, but I don't know where you got the permission to call the shots around here yeah. in my place of employment, Ron. But And that's the thing. I mean, we've had this conversation where it's like, this is work for us. Like, it's fun for Our everybody else. Our work is other people's fun, which yeah. is wonderful. We love that. Don't take advantage. But, well, no, and I always and I always use that. Like, you told me this once, and I always think of it, too, like, it's crazy because when people are like, oh, you're on the road, you're doing shows, it must be so fun. And it is fun. It's 100%. It's great. But where the entertainment, like where the night out. So like couple A and B come out, they come together, they watch the show, they leave together. You're just left there on your own. You know what I mean? Like you're just like the hired clown. And when everyone leaves, then you're just there by yourself. So I was like, I always explain that to my mom. I'm like, when the show's over, like it's still my job. Like I still have to like, talk to the owner. I still have to talk to people who are there, you know, whatever. She's great. My mom was great about it, whatever. But anyway, but that's not what I was going to tell you. So I get out on stage, right? I walk out. I, as soon as I walk out, the crowd is our typical crowd. You know, it's like 95% women, right? Mm-hmm. And dead center, there are six guys. Picture your dad, my dad, <laughs> Uh, your dad's oh, friend, my dad's friend sitting together, six guys in the center of it, dead center of the stage. And I just took the mic and I go, what are you guys doing here? Uh, Cause like, I knew there was no way they were there to see what did me they say? and they go, we have no idea what's going on right now. And they, so apparent it was the guy's bachelor party. And Hilarious. they just bought tickets to a comedy show, bought dinner. So they were put right up front because they came early. He goes mid. So he goes, I was so confused. He goes, there's only women here. And and I go, well, welcome. You're like, you're at a male review right now. Like, I'm going to start dancing. <laughs> like, And I was like, this is like being on The Bachelor. And I, it was his third wedding. He was there with like his son from his first wedding, his brother-in-law from his second wedding. Like it was such like an interesting crew of people and they were dead center. And it was great. Like everything just referenced back to like them being at their bachelor party. But apparently when they were eating dinner, the owner told me that the guy came out and he goes, am I missing something? Like there's no guys here. Like what's, what's happening? And the owner was like, no, he's just a regular comedian. Like, you know, what's the owner going to say? Oh, his audience is all women. Like, you know, so they were like, all right. So the guys, I mean, it was great for, for me, for the audience. Like the, and then they didn't laugh at most of the stuff. Like they were just like, kind of like tough guys about it. Like they would laugh once in a while. But then after the show, they came up to me, they took a ton of pictures. 
then went outside and a whole line formed and everybody took pictures with them. Hilarious. It was like, and then I was getting all these messages, hashtag Cosmo's bachelor party because the guy's name was Cosmo. So he like Not started Cosmo a whole- Cosmo on his third wedding. Third wedding, second son. Come on, Cosmo. But um, but they were eating and I was like, let me get some. But they were like, no, nah, you can't have any. And I was like, you know what I wish I had right now because I was starving? Factor meals. You know, let's face oh, it. The best. Co cooking can take forever. But with Factor, you only need two minutes. They send you fresh, never frozen meals that are pre-portioned and ready to heat. Just pop them in the microwave or on a stove for two minutes and you're all set. Approved by dietitians, so you know that they're good for you. Listen, I know we read these ads, but... Factor is one of the companies that I genuinely love, love, love and believe in because the food is delicious. And as a person like me who has literally no self-control at all, like I just ordered boneless wings and ate like 18 of them out of the 20. And I was like, <laughs> I'll save two for later for no reason. And I ate fries because I have no portion control. I was full after like eight, but I kept eating with Factor. It's all portioned for you. So you kind of just eat the meal and then you're like, all right, I'm not going to go make another one. Like I ate enough food for a person to eat. So they have tons of options to choose from, 60 add-ons every week. Whether you're counting calories, avoiding meat, doing keto, or looking to hit your protein goals like me, Factor has what you need to stay on track and save tons of time doing it. Head to factormeals.com slash socialstudies50 and use code socialstudies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's social studies five zero at factormeals.com slash social studies five zero to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Guess I got some shit to tell you. Did you watch this show on Netflix called Worst Roommate Ever? I see it on the thing and Melissa was like, oh, do you want to try it? But I, don't, I have no interest in it, but. Holy uncomfortable. This is insane. And here's the thing. It's so wild that I'm like, is this true? Is this real? Or is this like a, a show and it's like suppose like Blair Witch Project where we all thought it was real? You know what I mean? Wait, Blair Witch Project wasn't real? Shut the hell up, Gasper. I thought it was just a, like a mock, uh, like a, no, I'm just fucking it's with a, you. <laughs> I got to can't handle you sometimes. Okay, okay, okay. So, the episode that I watched was so insane. I'll sum it up for you. It's all about like insane situations with roommates. And I'm not talking like, oh, they never did the dishes and then we had botulism growing in our sink. No, it's like this woman had this best friend that she moved in for for years, right? And then she had a son. Now, let me tell you what, this friend... When you watch the show, you feel bad for the woman who it happened to, right? But at the same time, you don't. Because you're like, hey, bitch, when red flags start being presented to you, buck the fuck up and get out. But she just didn't. Just didn't. Was like, oh, she's just being a good friend. She just cares so much. And then she would do all this crazy shit. Well, what did she do? Like, Tell me. because I thought you would leave you. Okay. It started subtle. So when she started to bring, they were they ended up becoming roommates, right? When she started to bring guys over, the the roommate would scream at her from the bottom of the stairs to like turn down the TV and stuff. And then the guy would be like, I think I got to go. And then like when they would like be out and she would meet a guy, she would be like so rude and insane and like get crazy. And then she just started doing like nuts ass shit like that over and over to like try to get her excluded by herself started telling her you're hanging out with too many people. And then she like listened and dwindled down her social circle. Well, now she's got you trapped. Anyway, then she, she ends up her? having a son. Oh. Well, that's what people think. We don't know if it was love or if it was just like a possessive, possessive tendency, right? Yeah. She ends up having son who, a son who has severe autism, right? But the woman had like, slipped discs and shit in her back. So she had to keep having these surgeries. So the roommate was taking care of the son and it, her parents were really, really old. So she had to like write a will that if anything happened, like this girl would not only have custody of the son, but would get full life insurance if she died. Right. 
word to the wise, don't like, I don't give a fuck who it is. Be careful who your life insurance policy goes to. Because I've watched a lot of Dateline and I've watched a lot of this shit. People be killing. All right. Yeah. 100%. So she then randomly one day wakes up and is like, um, gets a phone call because she was served that she was suing her for custody of the child. Okay. The friend was suing her. The friend, right? To get it all straightened out took 10 days and she did not have her child for 10 days. What I, I gotta tell you this, Gasper. If it was me, wouldn't have happened. But where did it happen to a foster? Home? I would have gone to the bitch's house, tased her in the neck, taken my kid back and been like, don't give a fuck. We're going to Tijuana. Wait, like, where did the kid go? Kidnap my own kid. What? Where'd the kid go? The kid went With to her. her. With her. No, 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 no. No, legally, they did straighten it out and they found out she was lying. The dumb bitch goes back and lives with her again. Yeah. After that, lives so with her like again. I was you, like, so it's totally on you. Well, now it gets worse. She has to have another surgery, okay? And it's on her neck. And the roommate's the caretaker. Come to find out, it starts hurting. She's like the 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 roommate has to like clean it and blah blah blah. It starts hurting, blah blah blah. And then the, she's asking the roommate, "Does it look weird or anything?" Like that? She's like, "No, it looks totally fine." Blah blah blah. She's like, "It's hurting." It was hurting so much and swelling so much that it was starting to close her throat. So she had to go to the doctor. She went to the doctor. She said the doctor looked at it and gasped and jumped back and was like, "This is." If I was to describe this infection to you, it looks like there's blue cheese in your wound. She had to go. She had to go to the emergency room immediately to get this cleared up. Turns out she was buying bacteria on the dark web and putting it in her wound. And then she ended up buying insulin on the dark web and was mixing her pills at night. So she would give her ketamines that she would be so, so, so in a deep sleep. And then she would eject her with insulin so her blood sugar would drop. Tried to kill her three times that way. And then she bought some, she bought something called Versa, which is like a stronger MRSA, which is an antibiotic resistant strain of some bacteria. She bought it on the dark web and it's so intense that it's considered a weapon of mass destruction because it could spread like COVID and become a pandemic, right? The fucking FBI clocks the bitch and is like tracking her and stuff like that. So the FBI sent her a fake tracking number and sent a fake package to USPS for her to go pick up. Well, now they've confirmed she picked up a package that she knows is a weapon of mass destruction. They follow her. They raid her office. They sit her down for questioning. She lies three times about it. Then finally... She confesses she knows it was Versa. And she's like, oh, I was doing like research on it. They're like, you're not doing fucking research on this shit. They arrest her. They call her and they go tell the roommate. And the roommate's like, she would never, she would never do something like this. Are you stupid? But How are people like this, Gasper? Here's the best part, okay? She goes to jail. They had 22 years, 22 years is what she got, right? For buying attempted murder, weapons of mass destruction, stuff like that. Let me tell you what, Gas. She's out. She's walking the streets. She's not. She did not serve that. How time. long did She's she serve? Out. Twenty-two months. Why she get out? Good behavior or COVID? Who the hell knows? Hey, thank you guys so much for being part of our podcast. We couldn't make this possible without you and the help of from some of our sponsors. Yo, were you guys watching the Summer Olympics? Let me tell you what. Morgan and I are obsessed with gymnastics and diving. I'll watch that from morning till dusk. I can't get enough of it, but I'm constantly thinking about how all these athletes need to stay super hydrated whenever they are athleticizing. <laughs> now, and I bet they could use the help of Liquid IV. What is Liquid IV? Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. Three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, actually. All you got to do is tear open a packet, pour out Pour it into your water and live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates more than water alone. There's eight vitamins and nutrients, non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, 
and soy. And no artificial colors or sweeteners, too. It's a fan favorite. People are loving it, and we are loving it, too. You can choose from four delicious sugar-free flavors, by the way. White peach, which I'm obsessed with for summer, green grape, raspberry melon, and lemon lime. A zero-sugar hydration solution with no artificial sweeteners at all. Clinically tested to hydrate more than water alone. And like I said, it's so easy to use. You can carry these things while you're traveling on your summer trips. We take it when we're on the road just to do a little pick-me-up before and after the shows. And you can now get an awesome deal to get your liquid IV journey started. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with liquid IV and get 20% off your first order of liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code social at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using the promo code social at liquidiv.com. So two things come to my mind. One, the dark web in general, right? Like, it's so strange to me, like this concept of the dark web. Like, I don't know. I just don't know anything about it. Do you? Uh, no, because we're rational, normal humans who aren't trying to do fuckery. No, but like, like people say, oh, you could buy, you know, ketamine on the dark web. So is it like the internet? Like when I go on Google, is it like Google, but it's like dark web? Google, Can I ask like, you why the hell you're asking me? Like, I'm going to give you an answer of no, knowledge. No, but like, I'm going to Google it. Dark you know, web. No, 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 no. You're not going to Google it. Um, the dark web is part of the internet that lets people hide their identity and location from other people in law enforcement. Um, it could be used to buy and sell stolen personal information. I still don't get it, honestly. Oh, I just, look, there's the surface web, the deep web. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and say, web. maybe don't be typing in shit about the dark web. No, I just looked up what is the dark web. So I feel like And I'm going to go ahead and say you're now being pinged for human trafficking. No, no. Shit. But like, that's the thing. Like, they're not, you're not buying. It's not like Craigslist dark web. And it's like, here's, you know, stolen shit. It's like, it's all coded. I'm pretty sure. So it's like probably George Washington's teeth. And like, that would mean like <laughs> something like people know in the dark web world. Literally, you, know? you would, if you were to code something, like if you were coding some shit and you were selling it, it was like your dark web Etsy shop. It would be like Abraham Lincoln's hat, musket from the colonial revolution. Hold on. Speaking of a new, Abraham docu Lincoln's hat. A new documentary. I coming heard out. of it. You saw, I've gotten it about sent to Abraham me Lincoln being literally gay. Hundreds of times it's been sent to me. That What's Abraham it going to be on? I don't know, but they're saying that it like confirmed, but I told you they knew that he was laying in bed with men, but it was like a comfort thing. It wasn't like a sexual. I know we talked about this already, but it was just friends, two friends. <laughs> anyway, did you hear about that girl who called the cops on her date? I'm going to go ahead and tell you we're not done with the first part. Two friends. Anytime I've just laid in bed with two friends, it did not end PG. But anytime I ever did, it was fine. As a kid. I mean, like when I was like 15, we went on a high school trip and everybody had to lay. You had four guys in a room and we just laid like everyone. I just faced the other way. I wasn't like doing a reach around. Well, that makes one of us. Well, I wasn't there with you. <laughs> 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 anyway, but I do saying? remember like the senior trip, like all the boys' rooms were on one side, the girls' rooms were on the other. And I remember like it was just interesting. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. My mom my mom was to the podcast, so that'll end there. Um Where were you going? Where was I going what, with that story? You were you were about to say something, but like we ended up going back to Abraham. Oh no, no. So Lincoln. this girl was 18, right? Called yeah. She had a Tinder date. The guy showed up at her door. She wasn't interested in the guy and she called the cops on him to that's get it? rid of like him. Like that's all? That's it. Supposedly she never met, right? So the cops show up. The guy didn't want to leave because he was like, what the hell? Like, and uh, she said that she called the cops and said that she was pregnant with his baby and he was threatening to beat her up and kill her. So the cops came and they arrested the guy and the guy's like, 
whoa, 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 look, like we met on Tinder like two days ago. Like, here's the proof. It was all proven that the guy did absolutely nothing wrong and they arrested the girl because- Yeah, and she should be in there forever. Like, she's already get, it out. Would, Yeah, well, when people are showing you this type of psychosis, they don't go back to gen pop. Yeah. What are we missing, okay? Well, and Like, she so said, many times you have these people who like full on make death plans and stuff like that. They go to jail for making the plan and then like a week later. It's an, it's an adult case of going to the office and walking back with Takis. Yeah. I'm not but, fucking having it. But like she was 18 and she was like, oh, I just didn't really want to go on the date. I wasn't interested in him. And yeah, so you know what you like, do? You use your words. Yeah, and the cops were like, well, you wasted our time and now you're getting arrested. She got arrested for a few things. I do not like this. Yeah. Um. All right, speaking of Mississippi. Getting, speaking of Mississippi, my I got life insurance today. Ah. Oh, also, that was why the one roommate was trying to kill her roommate so she could take the son and get the half a million dollar life insurance policy. Yeah, half a million dollars is like, is that really worth it to have a kid for the rest of your life? That's not yours. You just yours. said the most New York fucking thing. Yeah, a half a million dollars I know is five dollars in New York. But yes, Gasper, from the middle of the country, half a million dollars is good for the rest of your life. No, I, not that it's not <laughs> five dollars. Like, listen to yourself. No, I mean, like, you, you understand the responsibilities of a child. So like, OK, cool. I have five hundred thousand. Even if you gave me five million dollars, if I had to take on a kid that's not mine for the rest of my life and watch him, is that worth five million dollars? Now I got to. Always have. I mean, Not I guess five you could, million, five hundred thousand. But no, but I'm saying if you're using your scale of money on me, like you get what I'm saying. Like any amount, would you just be like, "Hey, Joe, I'll give you five hundred thousand dollars, but you got to take Gasper for the rest of his life." Is that worth no. it to you? You no. know what I mean. And he's no. a great kid, so it's like, I just don't see like how, you know, I don't know. Anyway, but the life insurance. So you got life insurance? I'm not going to decline to answer because oh. I don't need to be killed. <laughs> so um, I got life insurance. So we should have got it a long time ago. We never A long, did. long time ago. But, but like, did they say you got holes in your esophagus so now it's more no, expensive no, no. or some shit? No, I, don't, I have perfect health, thank God. You actually so, don't, but okay. No, I do, I do. So I have my, like my health overall is perfect. I have no... um like history of anything, no surgeries, no whatever. And because my health is perfect, I have no hospitalizations. I have perfect. <laughs> I have... Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> I have no, I have, nothing's wrong with me. So because my health is perfect in it, I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't have, I don't, um, I, whatever. It doesn't have a matter. Crack esophagus. Mm -hmm. That's not a, that's not a kill me thing. So anyway, I don't know what are you I just it's not a part of it anyway so they came to my house today to do a blood test and to do a urine test but in my house on uh, and also unannounced no no I told them I said they said what day is good for you if we wanted to come and do a blood test I said I'm home so they said just we'll call you and then they called me like three days ago and they were like hi we want to schedule the test to come in and and do a blood and urine test. Yeah, your blood and urine's now on the dark web for sure. And uh, well, you know what's crazy? The guy didn't even have, first off, the guy like- Gloves on. He had gloves, but he came in wearing them and then he was just like loose with them. I don't know. And uh, and then first off, Lucy sat Can on I just the table. Like, also- <laughs> He was stupid Staten Island Hold on. too. I don't know why I'm having this reaction. And I don't know if it's the thought of it or the way the word sounds, but something about loose gloves <laughs> is making me is making me squeamish. Like loose latex. <laughs> like, yeah, not... they would just no, but I meant like he was loose with his gloves. Like, yeah, but also like, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's the loose with his gloves, like he just didn't care, or literally the thought of like a loose glove. He was both. He was both. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. Either way, he was super nice, but like he came Good in Lord. first off while he was doing the blood. Lucy's like, Daddy, be so brave. You got this, Daddy. Then as the blood was coming out, I hate giving blood, but 
I couldn't squirm because she was watching. So yeah, for sure. I had to just like sit there looking tough. And she's like, Daddy, it looks just like juice. <laughs> yeah, it's then, vampire juice. And then when I had to pee in the cup, she was standing outside the door going, Daddy has to pee in a cup. Daddy has to <laughs> pee in a cup. And the guy was cracking up laughing. I, I don't Why? know. But anyway, but then he didn't even put it in like a freezer or anything, like a fridge, no fridge bag. He just put it all in a box and, and he slapped the FedEx label on it. And he's like, now I'm going to drop it off. I was like, FedEx? Like, you're just FedEx in my blood and my pee? Like, what if the box gets crushed? Then Yo. piss and blood is everywhere. Gas. And then he's like, no, he's like, it, it's safe. And I was like, there's no cooler bag. Like, it's 100 degrees. He's like, and it gets sent to the middle of the country. It's in like Minneapolis or something. The the lab. Isn't that Gasper. crazy? People. <laughs> what? And my social security People numbers on there. have to send in their poop <laughs> in the mail i've done in, that in, not in, the, in mail. the mail no i dropped it off at an office because i had yeah. um uh parasites wait wasn't it like either i'm having deja vu yes this is e. coli. A, and wasn't it wasn't it like in a bag and it was like not a real office or something like you walked up to some shit and it like was not what you expected <laughs> well I had to just bring it to like a counter at like like a Walgreens <laughs> and it was just a bag of guess for shit. And I was like, oh no. But I had it in another bag. Also, you have to do this at the vet with your dog. Like if your dog has weird shit, you should take yeah. it in or whatever. It's 75 bucks and a pain in the ass. But also the way <laughs> that the vet techs are just so immune to this are just kind of like, thank you. I'm like, all right, okay. Apparently yeah, like we're one just time my friend's it. dog pooped out a rope like a full length rope and we had to bag it and had to send it in because they were like, why did he poop out a rope? And it had there to like is a show it. called My Dog Ate What? And it's like the weird dogs. Really, did I tell you Mac ate a baseball recently? Wait, a full baseball? Yeah, he ate all the leather off of a full baseball. How'd that come I out? was home. I was home for something. Morgan had to handle it. We were flipping out. And then he went, he had to go to the emergency room and they is just like, luckily it didn't pass deep enough, but it was still in his stomach. So they just induced vomiting and he threw it all up. Yeah. But we could, we, it was like a couple hundred dollars. We could have done it ourselves with like some peroxide. What? You can make a dog throw I up I guess peroxide? if you give your dog like diluted peroxide, you can like make them throw up. Like what about if they an ever adult? eat yarn or your panties or some shit. I don't know about adults. I, I'm going to go ahead and say don't test this. Probably you can Hold. find it on the dark web. You guys also, uh, we love email. Send your crazy stories about literally anything. We just love crazy ass stories. Do you have a nutso relative who's done some shit? Do you have a wild roommate who you need to tell us about? Did some shit happen when you were little and you just need to get it off your chest? Send it to the social studies podcast dot the social studies podcast at gmail.com. Here's a good one. Hey guys, I love the podcast and look forward to listening to your new episodes every Monday. Well, you asked for us to email us our story, so here it is. Last week, you were talking about ticks on the dick, and boy, do I have a story for you. My husband is a barber and he used to have his own salon. Without putting a label on it, I will just say, he had a lot of clients that were from rural areas. One of his regulars came in. My husband regularly said, how's it going? Not really expecting this answer. The guy says, ah, oh, you know, it's been great. Nothing too serious, but I had a tick on my dick. My husband goes, how did it get there in the first place? Not really sure how to keep the conversation going. The guy tells him that he probably got it from his dog because his dog sits on his lap all the time without missing a beat. My husband says, are you naked when your dog sits on your lap <laughs> not really wanting an answer and not sure how it went he didn't exactly get any information after that thank you so much for the podcast wow you know what we've heard from a lot of people from the tick and the dick episode and also i just need to say this you guys don't understand this gasper and i will find clips from the podcast that we're like this is gold We'll throw it up there and it'll get no love. But then we'll throw one up and we'll be like, this is going to do horrible. And it'll get millions and millions and millions, not only once, but every time we post it. Great example, when Gasper said paprika. I could post that 
at one o'clock in the morning and we'd wake up with five million views. Yeah, the tick on wild. the dick clip that we posted to the social studies Instagram page, if you haven't watched it, I still watch it in cackle. I laugh You're, thinking it every time. I'm like, your little <laughs> like, penis. <laughs> you're <right. laughs> and then we're just both like, no, no, no. It is so like, funny. Butthole? <laughs> the butthole. <laughs> it is very funny we do um, have great listeners i love i love the socialites uh one other thing that i had to tell you joseph was did you watch the show speaking of shows did you watch the show dark matter no but this is a very dark episode so it hit me so it's not dark well i guess it's dark dark matter is about this guy and he creates this box right and he can visit all different timelines of himself, essentially. So like there's one timeline. So like in your life, right, Joe? There's a timeline where you stayed a teacher. There's mm -hmm. a timeline where you pursued comedy. There's a mm -hmm. timeline where you're straight, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, it's like. <laughs> Honey, that was, there was never that timeline. <laughs> I, my amniotic sac was filled with glitter. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> Um, there's a time where like, you know, instead of John Stamos, you were looking at I John don't know who, Stamos. <laughs> I don't know who else was hot on that show. The girls literally remember watching that show and being like, Oh, uncle Jesse could get it. Oh, I remember watching it thinking the, the wife, I forgot her name. Uh, yeah, she's a criminal. Rebecca. Oh, Lori. Yeah. She's not a criminal. Lori Laughlin. She's a criminal. She Ask for a few favors from a few friends. Yeah, a few favors that were out of pocket. I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but anyway, it's about this guy who basically creates this box where he can visit any timeline of his life. And in one timeline, he's like a successful, super successful scientist. And in the other, he's a science teacher. But he's married and he's like with the love of his life. And in the one where he's like a super successful scientist, he like gave up love so that he can pursue science and he became like Stephen Hawkins, you know? And oh. he feels like he missed out on the love part of his life. So he goes like into this other dimension and kidnaps himself and joins the timeline of his life where he doesn't become a scientist and he's married to the love of his life. Yeah. And he switches with the guy basically. So then the guy who didn't become the scientist, who's a science teacher, is walking around as like this most famous scientist in the world. And he has no idea why he's there or how he's there. It's an interesting concept, but forget the show. Do you believe in like this multiverse Magic concept? in a young girl's heart? Wait, what? I don't get the reference, but... Say it um, again. Do you believe like in this concept that there's like multiple universes out there that like... And you don't do edibles. No, I'm just, do you believe in it? Like that there's like a multiverse that like every decision, like right now you, you decide to put me on with you on the podcast, right? There's a universe where you put somebody else and they killed you for your life insurance. Like there's a universe where, yeah, I don't know. All right, Can guys, thank say, you all for I, joining us today on the solstice. <laughs> we'll finish this on, we'll, we'll finish this on Patreon. Oh God, that's so much. Patreon.com slash socially podcast. We love you guys so much. Uh, get your tickets to see me live at thejodenbrowski.com. And get your tickets to see me, Gasparandazzo.com. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks.